so often on a Tuesday evening, we welcome a guest to Weatherworld. Typically, it's a faculty member or a distinguished alum of the department. Tonight is a little different. We have a special guest. She's a Pennsylvania writer. Mary Schaefer is from Bucks County. She's the author of Devastation on the Delaware, the story of the historic 1955 floods along the Delaware River and its tributaries. Welcome to Weatherworld, Mary. Thanks, Don. I'm happy to be here. Now, what inspired you to write this book? I actually grew up along the Juniata River in Huntington County, and I think there's something about that that kind of gives you a, a river sense. And then I found a, a photo essay that had been, um, you know, published about a week after the flood in 1955, and I couldn't believe nobody had covered it before. I see. Now, the meteorology behind the floods is, is well known. I've covered it here on Weatherworld. The combination of back-to-back -back tropical systems, Connie and Diane, right. caused the rivers to, to overflow the, their banks. You, your book tells the story from a very personal standpoint. Um, take us back to 1955, pre-flood. What was life like in northeastern Pennsylvania? Well, farmers were waiting for rain. It was, we were at the end of the worst drought we'd had in 30 years and people were hoping they could get their crops in and it would eventually become one of those things where you kind of be careful what you pray for because you might get it. Right. How many people who actually lived through the flood did you interview for the book? I interviewed over a hundred people that either lived through the flood or knew someone who did or had been with someone who had at the time and since the first edition was over in uh, 2005, I've probably interviewed another 30 to 40 people via email or phone. Okay. And as you just mentioned, the book, the first edition actually came out in 2005, the an 50th anniversary of the floods. Right. Um, you now have a second edition that's coming out now, the 55th anniversary of the floods. Tell us uh, about some of the new material that's in this second edition and what the reactions have been from some of the people who read the first edition. Well, a lot of the new material is in response to some of the people who, uh, you know, had asked for things that weren't in there or corrected some things that were there. I have a little bit off in some of my geography, but basically we have about um, 40 pages of new material. Uh, I would say 26 new photos, about 12 new maps. The maps were the things people really wanted so they could locate what we were referring to. And there's a couple of new stories. Um, probably the most striking one is a little more about Esther Neville, who, who died in uh, East Stroudsburg and whose body has never been found. Give us a, a couple more examples of a few of a few personal stories from the book that really made an impression on you. I think a really big one for me was a young man named Bob Herman who was 15 years old at the time and who ended up uh, getting caught up in the rescue and um, actually missed someone who was going downstream and he couldn't grab him and kind of really kicked young Bob from being a teenager right into manhood with you know not a lot of transitional time to adjust. What, what were some of the communities that were hardest hit in the floods of 55? Well, pretty much everywhere along the Broadhead Creek uh, in Monroe County, uh, the East Stroudsburg, Stroudsburg, um, Canadensis, a lot of the um, villages right, right along the Broadhead. And in fact, that's one of the main things that I wanted people to understand when I wrote the book was that essentially it's not just the Delaware River where the, you know, it was bad, but really the worst devastation happened along some of the major tributaries, uh, the Broadhead being the main one. And I remember I lived in, in Cunningham uh, near Hazleton for a couple years, and I remember folks there still talked about the, the flood of 1955. How did, how did this flood change the mindset of those folks who, who live along the river? I would say uh, it gave them more respect for the river. And it, uh, towards the end of the book, I talk about how it actually was kind of the birth of the idea of the watershed way of thinking so that people kind of became aware of the environmental importance of the river and our relationship with it. As you, as you did research for this book, I'm sure you, you discovered a few things that surprised you. Can, can you recount one or two of those? Yeah, I would say the thing that most surprised me was the fact that I was interviewing some of these people in the very houses that had flooded during the flood 50 years later, and I just couldn't believe it. I asked people, why are you still here? And pretty much to a person, they said, well, we kind of think that the river is our neighbor and is going to come to visit sometimes, and that's the beauty tax we pay for being allowed to live here. I see. Well said. Um, we have about 30 seconds left. You have a kickoff event 
set for the second edition of the book, which uh, Mary has kindly provided me with a copy of. You have it set for Wednesday in Easton. Tell us a little bit about where that is and what you plan on doing. Well, the Nurture Nature Foundation was kind enough to sponsor this printing of the book, and we have included some um, good data in here about how we are able to respond to the uh, flood threat now in ways we couldn't before because the communication. So they're sponsoring this in the Grand Estonian Suites on uh, First and Northampton Street, which used to be the Estonian Hotel and was flooded in the in I the see. 55 flood. Mary Schaefer. John, thank you so much. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks very much for joining us on Weather World.